This is Fergus Donohoe, and in this video we're going to take a look at what good arguments are. Let's begin with an example of an argument. The best things in life are free, and you can watch this video for free. Therefore, it is one of the best things in life. What makes this an argument is that it has premises in support of a conclusion. Premises are reasons given in favor of a conclusion, and the premises here are the best things in life are free, and you can watch this video for free. The conclusion, which is what we are being led to believe by the argument, is this video is one of the best things in life. Now, maybe this conclusion is questionable. This video might not be one of the best things in life. Who knows? Uh, certainly, we may imagine there are many videos on YouTube which are not the best thing, among the best things in life. Well, what's, what is the problem with this argument? The problem is it's invalid. And an invalid argument is one which is not valid. So, a valid argument is one whose premises imply its conclusion. As long as the premises are true, the conclusion must be true. Okay, let's go back to here. Uh, let's just assume that these premises are true. The best things in life are free, and you can watch this video for free. Even if that's true, it does not imply that this video is one of the best things in life. There, the thing is, there may be other things that are free besides the best things in life. Even if the best things in life are free, there could be other things that are free, such as getting punched in the face, or having your heart broken, or whatever. There could be all kinds of terrible things that are free. So the premises here are not implying that this conclusion is true. Okay, let's now take a look at a valid argument. Um, I'm keeping one of the premises. The best things in life are free. And now I have a new premise here. There is no such thing as a free lunch. And the new conclusion is, lunch is not one of the best things in life. Well, this does follow from the premises here. Uh, let's try to cons consider why. Okay, the best things in life are free. Mm-hmm. So we know from that that anything that is not free is not among the best things in life. And this is saying that lunch is not free. So we can con conclude that lunch is not one of the best things in life. Now you may think this is still not a good argument. And the problem with, with this argument now is not that it's invalid because it is valid. The problem here is that the premises are questionable. Uh, you know, what we want to say here is this argument may be valid but it might not be sound. A sound argument is a valid argument with true premises. Consequently, a sound argument will always have a true conclusion. But turning back to here, um, we don't know if these premises are true. Are the best things in life free? Maybe there are things in life that are fr that are among the best things that are not free. Um, some of the best things in life might be things you have to pay for, such as the internet, or things that take an effort to acquire. And in some cases, it may be that making an effort to get something makes it better. It's better to have something that you've earned yourself than to have it given to you for free. So it may very well not be true that the best things in life are free. Also, is it true that there is no such thing as a free lunch? Uh, couldn't someone buy you lunch and then your lunch is free? So maybe there is such a thing as a free lunch. Um, I know this statement is actually meant in a figurative sense. It's not saying, it's not really intended to mean 
that you can never get your lunch for free, but I'll move on. Okay, let's go on to an example of a sound argument. Here we have two premises. First premise is, if the number 7 is a prime number greater than 2, then it is an odd number. And the number 7 is a prime number greater than 2. So our conclusion is, the number 7 is an odd number. This is a valid argument. Its form is what is called modus ponens, which we'll look at in another video. And the premises are true. Um, concern, we, pri, um, two is the only even prime number there is. All other prime numbers are odd. So any prime number greater than two is going to be an odd number. That's true. And we also know that the number seven is a prime number greater than two. And the conclusion follows, and it's true, it has to be true because these are true and it's a valid argument, and it is true. The number seven is an odd number. So there you have a sound argument, and this is a good argument. But not all sound arguments are necessarily good arguments. Consider this argument. I believe this is a sound argument. The premises are, if evolution is true, humans are descended from apes and evolution is true. Our conclusion is humans are descended from apes. This has the very same form as this argument here. Just the premises are different. Um, just the sentences in making up the argument are different. But this is rather controversial. I believe evolution is true but there are many people in the world who don't believe evolution is true and so would not be convinced by this argument. A good argument is going to be one that is going to be more persuasive. It's going to be able to uh, convince people in a way that this argument fails to convince people. Okay. So far, we've been looking at deductive arguments. A deductive argument is one whose premises imply its conclusion. A deductive argument rests upon the truth or certainty of its premises. Besides deductive arguments, we have inductive arguments. An inductive argument is one whose premises support the likelihood of its conclusion. Here's an example. Every time someone has predicted the end of the world by a certain deadline, the world has continued on past the deadline. So, any current predictions about the world ending soon are malarkey. And at the time of this video, there's a prediction that the world is going to end in, what is it, 12 days from now? 11 days? Something like that. So, probably next week sometime. I, I really don't expect the world to end. I think this is a good argument in favor of the world not ending in, next week. But it is not it doesn't it does not establish its conclusion with certainty. It is possible that the world will end next week. Um, I really don't know, but I'm pretty sure it's not going to. Okay, finally we can look at the qualities of good arguments. A good inductive argument is one whose premises are evidently true, or at least very probable, and the premises lend strong support to the conclusion. A good deductive argument is a sound argument whose premises are evidently true. So we have two kinds of arguments here, inductive, deductive, Inductive arguments normally start with various observations and build up from there and go to establish general principles. Like, you might observe that dogs around the world behave a certain way and inductively infer that some, something or other is true about dogs. Deductive arguments tend to go from generalizations to uh, 
things we can know about particular things. Like if you know something about dogs, like all dogs are mammals, and you know that something is a dog, then you can conclude that thing is a mammal deductively. Okay, in the next video, we're going to be looking at forms of valid arguments, using particularly the rules of inference which apply to sen sentential logic, that these letters here each represent entire sentences. And we're going to be looking at some rules of inference which can be used to show that we have valid arguments. Uh, thank you for watching this video. If you've enjoyed it, uh, please like it or favorite it. And if you want to see more videos in this series, please subscribe.